A truck that rolled out with such unique features and style, it became a collector's dream. But only a handful are left today. As we uncover these hidden gems and tell the stories of trucks that are nearly lost to history. Get ready, because this is going to be a wild ride into the world of ultra-rare pickups. Studebaker Champ a classic light-duty pickup truck that rolled out from the Studebaker Corporation's factories between 1960 and 1964. This truck wasn't just any vehicle, it was the final gem designed by Studebaker before they waved goodbye to the auto industry in 1966. Imagine a time when Studebaker's trucks hadn't seen a fresh design in over a decade. The company was tight on cash, so when it came to designing the Champ, the team had to get creative with a tight budget of $900,000. What they managed to pull off was nothing short of impressive. They created a truck that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other American trucks of the time in terms of price, capabilities, and performance. The backbone of the Champ was pretty much the same as Studebaker's E-Series trucks, which had been around since 1949. But the real twist came with the cab. An all-new cab was a no-go because of the budget. However, the body of the new Lark compact car was a perfect fit, so they took a Lark sedan, chopped it in half behind the front doors, and tweaked the front half to mount onto the truck chassis. Resourceful, right? Under the hood, the Champ was quite versatile, offering several engine options including a couple of V8 with sizes ranging from 2.8 liter to 4.7 liter. One unique thing about the Champ was that, unlike most American pickups of the 60s, it never came with power steering. Plus, from 1960 to 1964, it featured a sliding back window, which was pretty handy for ventilation and accessing the cargo bed without having to get out of the truck. Despite its cool features and the effort put into its design, the Champ never really took off in sales even by Studebaker's modest standards. Production hovered around 5,000 units annually, peaking at 7,325 in 1962. By the 1964 model year, production numbers had fallen to just 2,509 as Studebaker's South Bend plant closed down in December 63. When Studebaker moved its operations to Hamilton, Ontario in 1964, that was the end of the road for its truck manufacturing. The rarity of the Studebaker Champ comes down to its limited production numbers and the eventual closure of Studebaker after the 1966 model year. Plus, these trucks were prone to rust, especially around the cab floor and front fenders. If not taken care of, the rust could get pretty bad, making repairs expensive or even impossible. This has made surviving Champs quite rare and sought after by collectors today. 1947 Hudson Big Boy Pickup This truck isn't just any vintage ride. It's a rare treasure in the realm of classic vehicles and for good reason. So why is this truck such a big deal? Let's dive in. So right after World War II, there was a huge demand in the U.S. for pickup trucks, especially from farmers and tradespeople. Hudson, known for its eye-catching but pricier pickups, rolled out the Big Boy. Despite its cool name and style, the 1947 model ended up being the last of its kind. Why? Well, it turns out that while Hudson pickups were stylish, what people really needed were simple, no-frills work trucks, and the big boy, with its higher price tag, just didn't fit the bill. The 1947 Hudson big boy was part of a batch of 2,917 Super 6 pickup trucks Hudson produced that year. Under the hood, it boasted a 212 cubic inch flathead straight six engine, pumping out 102 horsepower. It came with a three speed manual transmission and featured duo automatic brakes. This meant it had two brake systems, one hydraulic and one mechanical. So if the hydraulic brakes ever gave out, the mechanical brakes were there as a backup. After 1947, Hudson decided to discontinue the big boy pickup due to its slow sales. Over the years, many of these trucks were forgotten, left to gather dust or rust away. However, some were lucky enough to be rediscovered and restored to their former glory. There's a story of a 1947 big boy that was found in a warehouse in 1970. 
and didn't see the light of day until it was restored 50 years later in 2020. The Hudson Big Boy stands out as a rare gem for a few reasons. Only about 2,917 were made in its final year of production, and with the years taking their toll, only a handful have survived to this day. This truck marks a significant moment in Hudson's history, the end of an era for their pickups. Its limited numbers, coupled with its unique design and place in automotive history, make it a hot commodity among classic car enthusiasts. 1957 Dodge D 100 Swepside Pickup This old truck is a standout model with a cool origin story, some standout features, and a level of rarity that makes it a top pick for collectors. Back in the mid-1950s, Chevrolet launched its Cameo Carrier, and it really shook up the pickup scene with its stylish car-like appearance. Dodge needed something to grab attention away from Chevy and Ford, who were leading the pack with their own designs. By 1957, Dodge answered back with the D100 Swepside. Unlike the standard pickups of its time, the D100 Swepside borrowed sleek, finned fenders and bumpers from Dodge's own 1957 two-door wagon, giving it a distinctive, flashy look that was all about flair. The magic happened in the Dodge Special Equipment Group. The team, led by Joe Burr, transformed the D100 by swapping out its plain rear fenders for those stylish station wagon fenders and tailgate. They didn't stop there. They also added fancy two-tone paint, a classy wooden cargo bed, fancy wheel covers, and white wall tires to really push the Lux vibe. Under the hood, this truck was no slouch. It was equipped with a hefty 315 cubic inch V8 engine, one of the largest at the time, cranking out 204 horsepower. The D100 swept side also featured an advanced for its time three-speed automatic load flight transmission with a modern push-button shift. Options like power steering and power brakes, along with a deluxe cab that included a wraparound rear window, made it both powerful and comfortable. Despite its standout design, the swept side didn't stick around for long. By January 1959, Dodge discontinued it. The swept side was more of a flashy play to boost interest in Dodge pickups, which were struggling against stiff competition. This truck's brief production span from 1957 to 1959, along with its limited rollout, some sources say as few as 180 were made in 1957. This has made it incredibly rare today. In fact, fewer than 100 are believed to still exist. Its unique design and limited numbers have turned the D100 Swepside into one of the most sought-after pickups from the 50s among collectors. 1979 GMC Amarillo GT Pickup Back in the late 70s, car makers loved to roll out special editions and limited-run models, and GMC was no exception. In 1979, they introduced a lineup called the Amarillo. The Amarillo GT, crafted by the American Coach Corporation out of Warren, Ohio, was a mid-tier model that offered more than just the basics. The Amarillo GT was hard to miss with its bright yellow paint job accented with red and orange graphics. It wasn't just about looks, though. It was also about performance and comfort. The GT stepped things up with larger radials, finned wheels, a sleek front air dam, a roofline spoiler, and flashy chromed side pipes. And if you went all out for the Cowboy Cadillac version, you got even cushier upgrades like soft upholstery and a cozy trucker's lounge seating. As for power, the 1979 GMC Amarillo GT was no slouch. It was one of the fastest trucks around at the time, capable of hitting quarter-mile speeds in just 15.6 seconds. It packed a solid 175 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque, making it more powerful than other models from the same family. Despite its appeal, the Amarillo GT had a very limited production run, which was pretty common for special editions during that era. The main reason the Amarillo GT is such a rarity today comes down to its limited production numbers. Special editions like this were typically made in smaller quantities, which means not many were made to begin with. Over the years, with the natural wear and tear on vehicles, even fewer of these trucks have survived. That scarcity is exactly what makes the Amarillo GT a gem for collectors today. 
Chevrolet 3100 pickup. A standout member of the advanced design series that was rolled out from 1947 all the way to 1955. Post World War II, America was booming and so was the demand for new vehicles, especially trucks. Chevrolet was quick off the mark, launching its second series 1947 trucks, known as the Advanced Design Series, right as the war ended. These weren't just any trucks. They were built on the robust foundations of pre-war designs, but jazzed up with some sleek contemporary styling that borrowed elements from GM's passenger cars. The designers of the Advanced Design trucks really prioritized the driver's comfort and overall driving experience. The cabs were roomier with more space for hips, heads, and legs. They even thought about noise reduction, adding thicker mats and better insulation than previous models. The bench seat was designed to fit three people comfortably and adjusted in such a way that even shorter drivers could get a good view over the dashboard. Plus, they increased the windshield area and offered optional corner panel windows to minimize blind spots, a thoughtful touch for safety and convenience. These trucks were powered by a 216 cubic inch straight six engine that was standard until 1954, when it got replaced by the more powerful 235 six, which had full pressure oiling and insert bearings. Most of these trucks came with a three speed synchromish transmission, though you could opt for a four speed if you wanted. Specs wise, these trucks were solid performers with a decent output of 90 brake horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque, making them reliable workhorses for their time. The 1947 models were part of a special half-year production run right after Wu II to get Americans back on the road. By 1948, there were slight tweaks like a redesigned transmission now using a column shift and a foot-operated emergency brake. These quick transitions and updates in the model years make some of these trucks, like the 1954 series, quite rare today. They were only produced for about two years, adding to their scarcity and allure in the collector's market. Despite their rarity, or perhaps because of it, these trucks have become highly sought after. The unique blend of classic design with practical upgrades makes them particularly appealing. Interestingly, while the task force trucks, from 1955 to 59, have seen significant fluctuations in the market, the 3100 series remains a prized possession for many, fetching high prices at auctions and in private sales. So there you have it, the Chevrolet 3100 from the Advanced Design Series, a truck that's not just a means of transportation, but a piece of American history that collectors and enthusiasts adore. Whether it's the unique design, the thoughtful features, or the robust engineering, there's a lot to love about these trucks. Thanks for diving into this classic with me today.